Hey everyone, Melanie Menschinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new really fun project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Magnificent Moths. And I'm packing a lot of different tips and techniques into this video, but I want to show you how to create a really fun easel design with this moth that is going to allow your recipient to open the card up for this little stand, just like that, to display it. And then I'm going to tip it so that you can see it's going to look like your moth is flying right off of the edge of that card. So, so pretty and perfect with all of my beautiful bees, butterflies, and beautiful wings series. So the other products that you're going to need in addition to the Magnificent Moth set is some cardstock. So I'm going to be making a single layer card today. This is on the Apple Mint cardstock and I have a piece of cardstock that is four by four inches to stamp and emboss that and butterfly on. And then I've got some of the Gina K. This is the ivory, but I used white here. I am out of my white cardstock right now, horror of horrors, so I need to order some more. But this is four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. We're also going to be needing to use a scoring board, and I'm gonna have to improvise my scoring tool because I can't find that at the moment. Going to be using the Mini Misty for doing my stamping. These are large images in here. These measure three and three quarter inches square. So I recommend a stamp platform for really picking up all of that detail and accommodating the bigger images. But if you don't have that, a great block to use for these is the Gina K four by six block. And then you could also use a smaller block for the smaller images. The ink that you're using for this, you're going to need some embossing ink. So this is the Gina K embossing and watermarking ink. I have got some of the Gina K Bubblegum, Sea Glass, and Coordinating Apple Mint to go with that cardstock for doing my stenciling design. And then I'm going to be using the Gina K New A Little Hello Layering Stencil Bundle. So it comes with dies, stamps, and then these three different layers for creating that background. If you don't have the stenciling or don't want to do the stenciling on it, you can see that I've included some different flowers in this to create some little backgrounds for that. So I wanted to show you, here are two different cards that I made. Again, different flowers, the ones from this set. And then this is coloring actually on white, but part of today's tutorial is showing you how much work the coordinating card stock can do for you and you're just layering on one color ink. And so all I'm using is the one color of Copic, the YG41 Pale Cobalt Green to create the shadows and the depth on this image. Also got some foam tape. I've got the Marby Jewel Picker to go with these Angel Aura Rhinestones, which are just going to bling up the eye spots on that really nicely. And then some of the Gina K Connect Glue for adding those embellishments. Don't need any for the layers because I'm making a single layer card. I haven't received my dies yet for this set, although it has a die for each of these little images in a set, and it is available online, but we didn't get them until um, right before release day, so I had to fussy cut this out. So I've got one that I already cut out to save time, but if you don't have dies and a die cutting machine, just a little pair of scissors for doing that die cut. I've also got just a little towel here. This is the Gina K Tidy Towel. I've already gotten it damp, and this is just gonna make sure that you have a really clean image to start off with when you are doing your embossing. And then I've got some white detail powder and a Marvy heat gun. So I think that's all the products that we're gonna be using today. I do have also just a sheet of scratch paper to protect my work surface for when we're doing our blending and to funnel in that embossing powder. Also here are the Gina K blending brushes that I'm using with that stencil. So I've got one dedicated to pink and to green. So let's get started on our image. So what I'm gonna do, I already have this inside my, my Misty. I recommend though, I like to use up my scraps when I'm doing die cutting, but I also, if you have a really big image like this, if you center it on your mat, you're gonna be able to take this negative cutout, this four inch piece, plop it right onto a square card and then stamp or stencil into it and it's gonna look really, really sharp rather than just on a random scrap. So that's a little tip that I have for you. Just being intentional and thinking about what you're gonna be able to do with that leftover piece later. It's really beautiful. 
So I'm just going all over this moth with my clear ink. And normally you can kind of see that it's all shiny, but it's very difficult to tell with the clear ink. So I just go over it more than I need to. And then we're just gonna press it right down and rub all over. You can use your hand or a Chucky tool, but I'm just really going all over it to make sure that I get all of that detail. And hopefully you'll be able to see that outline emerging there. I might do just a little bit more here on the body. That's the only part that I see that is maybe not as detailed as the other. That's just probably my hand strength. Okay, yeah, so that is much darker there now. All right, so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this out of the Misty and grab my scratch paper and I'm going to add my detail powder and I don't have any of the Gina K detail powder, white powder right now. I've got the puffy, but the puffy is not going to show up the detail as much. I'm going to show you what the puffy would look like just so that you can see. And then I'm also going to show you an example with some of the brass band just so you can see how the metallic will work. But I think a detail white is really, if you're going for what a true Luna Moth looks like, it's going to be the best because they just have those really gossamer, powdery, dusty wings. It's just so beautiful with those kind of pale white edges. And this would also be beautiful on vellum and then sponge because their wings are, are very translucent. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit this with our heat tool and you just want to Keep it a couple inches away and keep it moving so it doesn't scorch your paper. If you're going to be doing any embossing, you really do need to have a gun that's dedicated for this rather than a hair dryer. It's just going to blow your, your powder around and you're going to be frustrated. But it is a great investment to have because everything looks better embossed and it works with so many techniques. Okay. okay, and I'm just gonna let that cool down for a minute. You don't wanna touch your embossing too soon or you can leave a little fingerprint in it if it's too soon. All right, so I'm gonna take that marker and this YG41, okay. And what we want to do, oops, and I really, I just really like this particular color. I have a lot of different um, alcohol markers, but this is just a really nice match with the apple mint. And then also I like the brush tip that it has on there so you can just really feather it out. So you see how I'm just going right into each of those different individual sections there and pulling it towards the center of that wing and that is just going to fade right out as you just do those flicking strokes. And it's so fun coloring something that's embossed because it gives you kind of a little bumper there to prevent going outside of the lines. Put this here, it's a little bit better. And so I'm just going just at the very edge this is where you would see the darker portions of the image. And it does fade a little bit as it dries, but you can go back and as you layer these on, even the lighter colors, it is gonna get darker, okay? And then you can put just a little bit there at the middle, coming out from the edge of the body. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit along the edge there where the wings will be overlapping and then you can trace just along the edge of a couple of those wings just to kind of create those little folds. Okay, but just so easy. And you'll, again, you wanna pull up rather than just tracing along the edge, otherwise you're gonna get a harder looking edge. Oh, and it really, really just goes up, just a little flicking stroke. Okay, so let me show you one that I have already cut out. Like I said, I don't have my dies yet, but I will soon. So I wanna show you how beautiful and easy it is to add these angel aura rhinestones to 
this butterfly. So I'm gonna take the Marvy Jewel Picker and it has two ends here for big and small embellishments and it's sticky, it stays sticky and so it's gonna really help pick up those tiny little jewels. You know, I've been stamping now for almost 19 years and it was a lot easier to pick up these little things but even when I was younger, just it's so persnickety getting the small ones. This really helps a lot so I wish that this was something that I had gotten earlier. I'm just gonna put a tiny dot of glue on each of the little spots on here. And these rhinestones come in three different sizes, so I'm gonna use the smaller and the larger one. And I found that they look really different when you have them upside down. So here is one that's upside down. It looks a lot clearer, but then when you turn it over, you really pick up all of those greens and pinks and purples. It's, just, it's very, very pretty. Very angelic, like, like their name. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to just flip these over and I'm gonna put the small ones on first at the top. I, I did them upside down on another card and I just really liked how that looked. But see how you just pick it just right up and then when you press it into the adhesive and hold it for a second, you just peel it right away and it comes right off. Okay, so I'm gonna use the larger ones on the bottom and I just don't use this embellishment as often because of the way it photographs. If I don't have pink in my design, then it just looks a little too pink, I think, in photos. But I'm so glad that I couldn't find my clear flat sequins, which I was really wanting to use on the project at first, um, because I just think this really complements the stamping and stenciling that I'm gonna do. Isn't that pretty? So I just wanna, all right. So here's the one that I already cut out. So let's go ahead and get that card base done. So I'm gonna take my four and a quarter by 11 inch sheet. And for an easel design, this is a top fold card. So you are gonna score at the five and a half inch mark, which is the exact middle of 11 inches, just like you would a top fold card. So I'm gonna go in with just the edge of my blending brush, okay? And then, and I'm gonna score this part after we do our stenciling so that I don't make a crease in it. But the middle of five and a half, because we want this to fold up, just right in the middle, is gonna be at two and three quarters. So I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Let's go ahead and just do our stenciling real quick on the front of this card, okay? So I am going to start so I have got all of, it says Gina K Designs, bold flowers at the bottom. So that is what is gonna help me keep it all straight. This is how they're all gonna be lined up. You always wanna go big to small on your stenciling. So I'm gonna start with this. And I'm gonna just load up my brush with the bubblegum ink. And, and so I'm putting just a little bit into the area outside of my card and I can line that up. And that helps me know that I've got my stencil in place, but also the bottom of that stencil on all three of them have that Gina K printing on it. So you know that that's where it lines up, okay? And you can go as heavy as you want if you like them really solid. I like my stenciling to be a little softer so that you get more dimension in there, okay? All right, now I am gonna go in and just line this up just like that, okay? And you could use a different color if you want or I'm gonna use just the same pink ink. And this is gonna add those little folds and veins to my flowers. So layering the same color ink on top of itself is going to create a darker look, okay? So I'm gonna just give you a little peek of that, not pretty? And then we're gonna go ahead and do our green with the green brush. So I'm gonna set this aside. The green in here. Those green leaves. And I'm so thankful recording this video today that both of these products are still in stock. <laughs> okay, 
And then we're going to go to our final one. And that is just going to put the extra green on the leaves. And then the middles of those flowers. And I chose I chose to do some of the sea glass for the middle of the flowers and that's just going to make, oh, and so I want to go ahead and use my blue blending brush for that. So actually I've got a third one here. You can also wash these, but it's just really nice to not go back and forth and, and muddy your brushes or muddy your blending or muddy your ink pads. So I'm just going to put just a little blue there, a little blue there, and a little blue there. And I want to go ahead and put the flower inside on the center, just at a place where it's going to fold up. So let's go ahead and I am going to make that fold. So at two and three quarter inches right here. And so I did layering of a four inch by five and a quarter piece for the top and on the inside, but you, I wanted to show how you can also do this with just a top fold card, just single layer. If you are gonna do this mat on here, you have to glue that on and you just have to fold it so that it doesn't buckle up. It just gets a little bit hinkier because you have that extra thickness of the card stock, okay? So what this is gonna do now, you would fold that up and fold this up and then you want to find approximately where you want the center of that flower. And this can, this can fold all the way up like that. It can be farther out. It's up to you. I'm going to put it right about here. And again, if you don't have any buttons, what you could do, this is one of those die cut flowers. You could pop this up on a foam square and it would do just like that. So I think that's actually what I'm going to do. Instead of showing that stenciling process on the inside, I'll show you what that looks like, but I'm going to go ahead and just put this right on here and then we'll go ahead and do the button. And you can make it stick and this would actually give you two options because you could have it stick against the button or you could have it stick against the flower. And you can add your button with some of the Gina K ink. I mean, excuse me, the connect glue or another little foam square. And I'm out of my foam square, so I'm using some other foam tape that I have. Just kind of running out of everything. That's kind of what happens after a big frenzy getting ready for a release. Okay, so that can go like that. Pop on like that. Or, hang on, let me, I need to fold this a little bit better that, that, like that. Okay. All right. So that is just need a little bit more folding. I might use a bigger, there we go. I need a bigger button. I think a little more reveal. Okay. So now I did this. I did this. I have that. Let's go ahead and put a greeting on here and I'm going to use one of the ones from my set and I'm going to do just need to do that a little bit more. So I'm going to do May Your Big Day Be Magnificent, and we're going to do our stamping so that this will work around the butterfly, or the moth, excuse me. And I, I could have done this as Beautiful Butterflies too, or Beautiful Wings too, because I had some moths in that Beautiful Wings set, but I just love the alliteration, so I kind of had to, to break the beautiful chain and do Magnificent. Oh, and I, let me pull this out real quick because I forgot I still had some stamping that I wanted to do on this. Actually, hang on. I'll just do it like this. You can have your card hanging out. So forgive me while I'm kind of calling an audible here. Okay, so I've got that pressed into the corner. So may your big day be magnificent. And I put big day because that'll work for so many things, for wedding, graduation, and then I just make sure that wherever I'm putting the words, it's going to fit. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna close that. 
I want to clean this off because I think I did these in black last. So I'm going to use my... And the last time that I used this, I did kind of an ombre effect on the Magnificent. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do the pink. And then I'm just going to roll on a little bit of this black at the bottom. So I'm just going on the edge there. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Okay, and see how it got just a little bit of the pink there. All right, so now we're going to take this out. Put this aside. And then I just want to use a little bit of my foam adhesive just to pop this away from the card. If you want, you can use the Connect Glue, but I like to have just a little bit more dimension. And if you want to have it centered, flying off this way, I just like things angled more often, but if you want to have it centered, you could do that. But you're not going to be attaching anything above this center line here. Okay, you're only going to be attaching to this bottom part. So I'm just putting some of my adhesive foam on this bottom wing and then I just want it okay. so I'm just going to put it right about here and then you can fold that away a little bit so it's going to be even more dimensional and there's your card and then if you wanted you can add another greeting on here. So like I could do this sending a happy hello. Go ahead and do that. And then I think I wanted to add just a few little elements from this since I already had the stamp set out. So I'm gonna go ahead and use just my small block. I really like using a small block for smaller images so that I can just have the versatility. I don't have to keep moving the cardstock around or the stamp around, I just move my hand. And if you want, you could put this little blue right in there, stamp it around. That is just so pretty, such a fun stencil. And then on the inside, I'm gonna do this hello, sending a sweet hello. And I just love, as always, we don't talk about what we're going to be submitting, but I just love mixing and matching all of our new sets together, our talented illustrated team and Gina. And then go ahead and pick out one of these little messages that goes with hello. Since I already said something, I wanted to put the hello at the end rather than at the beginning. Sending a happy. I think I'm going to do this with the blue. Okay. So look for more projects. I got to do a shout out to my husband for clearing out of our office so that I could get this done today. He's working from home again, so it's just been harder to do videos. I apologize, but I will be doing them. Okay. And that's your easel card. So it's just going to pop on. I need to just go pull this up just a little bit to help me hold it in place. And so because I don't have that extra layer, it's just wanting to pop up. There you go. Okay. So it just takes a little while just to get it folded. But such a fun card to make. I hope that you enjoy the different tips in this video and that you'll make lots of easel cards. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, and my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Melanie Minchinger, for more ideas and techniques using all of our stamps from Gina K Designs, and we'll see you on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching today. God bless.